The bullpen needs work. It needs a lot of work. So I picked up flashback Jonathan Papelbon. And in a previous video, I said that it was kind of, it would be a waste kind of to grind out a thousand innings to get this guy. But I noticed a couple of days ago, actually, that I already had about 400 and something innings played with Red Sox players. I didn't even realize it. I guess playing with Carlton Fisk, Xander Bogarts, and now David Price. And even when I first started playing, uh, uh, when the game first came out, MLB came out in late March. I remember I had Ortiz and Mookie Betts. I'm pretty sure I had a lot of Red Sox players on the squad when the game first came out. So I was grinding out innings with them. I didn't even realize it. So I had about 433 innings or something play with Red Sox players. So I was like, all right, maybe if I just marathon it one day, I can get this guy because the pen does need work. That is pretty much the only uh, spot, I guess, in the in the roster, on the roster, that needs improvement is the bullpen. So I picked up flashback Jonathan Papelbon. I was looking to get him in the game. Didn't even care what the score was. I was going to get him in the game. Uh, the first game I played with him, and no surprise again, David Price is on the hill. I'm starting to feel bad for people watching these videos because every single game, David Price is taking the mound. It's starting to be a bit ridiculous. I'm thinking about quitting out of games so I don't have to pitch with Price every damn game. He's pitching literally 90% of the games since he's been on the team. Check out that little hit from Barry Larkin down the right field line. Just a little dribbler, kind of. Gets by the first baseman. This guy's making a circus out of the throwing right there. So Larkin's on second base with the double. Adrian Beltre comes to the plate next. Just a ground out to short right there. So Fielder is at the plate with two down. Trying to shoot the gap right there. But his shortstop comes up with it. Able to throw him out at first base. And I'm not getting anything in the bottom of the first. Just going to hit with Barry Larkin. And then first out of the inning is coming from a ground out to Ron Crew. I put Crew back in the lineup because, I don't know, I just, just kind of need to start using this guy more because I grinded out so many innings to get this guy and I haven't even been playing with him at all. So I put him back in the starting lineup and then I put Bogarts on the bench. So if I need a pinch hitter, possibly I'm going to put Bogarts in. And I actually picked up Anthony Rizzo in the captain sets because I had about two, 2,300 and something tickets, I'm pretty sure. And Rizzo was going for around 2,300. So I picked up Rizzo. He is also on the bench at the moment. I might actually put him at first for a game or two just to see what he can do. Maybe. I don't know because Fielder is... Definitely one of my favorite players on the team at the moment. And he has been since he's been on the team. So I don't know what's going to happen with Rizzo. Just we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Who the hell is this guy? David Price is sending one to the left center gap. And he is cashing in two runs right there. What the fuck is going on so far in this game? Price the RBI machine to start this game off, cashing in the first two runs of this game. And then Ichiro is slapping one to left field right there. Price makes it to third. Uh, after the single from Ichiro, Larkin just flies out to right field right there. So, man, fucking David Price is coming through in the clutch, cashing in the first two runs of the game. So, man, that's, that's something you don't... Know, actually, to be honest, I get a lot of hits with my pitchers on the mound. I don't know what it is. It's probably just because I'm literally screwing around when they're up at the plate. I'm just like, I'm not even barely looking at the TV half the time, just swinging randomly and half the time I get hits. And I find that's the case for everybody I play too. They always get hits against me when their pitcher is coming to the plate. Sometimes, to be honest, I see their pitcher come to, come to the plate and I'm like panicking because... I'll be on the mound with anybody, and I'll be pitching good, and then the pitcher will come to the mound, and I'll be like, shit, he's, he's going to get a hit, and I'll be laughing my ass off because the pitcher will eventually get a hit. But anyway, it's just craziness. Beltre gets a hit up the gut, and then Gwynn is just grounding up to third base right there. He can't get the double play, can't turn two, so Rod Carew is coming up to the plate. There is two down. I'm looking to get on the board with Carew, looking to get some hits. I haven't been able to get much with him. 
I'm just grounding out to second base to end that inning. He gets out of it unscathed. But yeah, crew. I don't know, man. I remember his debut. I went two for four with him, I'm pretty sure. And then after that, I honest to God probably only got one hit with him. I'm not blaming crew. That is all me. That is all me 100%. I'm just saying I haven't been able to get a hit with crew since uh, I've gotten him barely. But I'm looking to get him back in the... I haven't been even using him that much. This is probably only his, what, fourth or fifth game since I've gotten him. No joke. Carl Crawford, the number one guy you want leading off the inning, man. Jesus, this guy comes through again, driving one to the left center gap as Price did earlier. But look at this guy fly around the bases. Is that a fucking cheetah flying around the bases? Crawford able to make it into third easily. And... Okay, for left field, I wanted to say this too. For left field, as Crawford takes off for home after the strikeout on Yogi Bear, I think that was. This guy wasn't paying attention. Caught him with his pants down by his ankles, and Crawford scores from third base. So it's now a 3 0. But yeah, like I was saying, for left field, I need some more power in the lineup. I need power bad. I didn't even realize how little power I had on the squad. I mean,. Beltre has good power. I think it's against righties. It's either, I don't know. It might be against lefties, but I think he only has good power against righties, and it's in the 90s or high 80s, I'm pretty sure. But then the opposing left or right, whatever it is, is only in the 70s, I'm pretty sure. And then uh, Flashback Fielder has like 98 versus righties and 96 versus lefties, or it might be the other way around. So Fielder is literally the only guy on the team with the crazy power. So I'm looking to get some more guys with, I'm talking about like statistical, statistics wise, Fielder is the only guy with some good power because obviously everyone hits home runs. Beltre has been hitting a lot of home runs since he's been on the team and so has Barry Larkin, even though Barry Larkin hasn't hit a home run in a couple of games I'm pretty sure, but still, statistically speaking, Prince Fielder is the only guy on the team with good power, so I'm looking to get some more guys with good power and then what I might do once I get a left fielder. Or another guy just in the outfield. Not necessarily a left fielder, just another guy in the outfield. I might put, or I might rotate uh, Ichiro and Crawford at center. Because I don't know what it is, man. Some people probably agree with me. There's just certain guys you get that you just feel more comfortable with. Like the, the batting stance, the swing, where they are in the batter's box. You just feel more comfortable. They might not even be even close to your best uh, like overall player or anything they might be like an 80 overall or something but they might have a, a stance you like a swing you like you know what I mean just stuff like that and Crawford has has that man he is just I don't know what it is the swing the stance everything is is just in my favor like I like everything he's got and each row no man sometimes I struggle with each row I go like games talking 10 games maybe sometimes I won't even get a hit with each row so I might rotate Ichiro and Crawford in at center, or if I leave Ichiro in at center, I just might start rotating the outfielders once I get some more guys, obviously, but I'm not done with Crawford. He'll never be done in this, uh, in this this on this team. To be honest, if I were to choose between Ichiro and Crawford, I don't know, man. That's, that is close, but I think I would actually go with flashback Crawford. No joke. At this very moment that I'm saying this, I would go with Crawford. So I don't know what the future holds, but I'm definitely looking to get another outfielder right there. Either way, here is Ichiro, and we're now in the bottom of the seventh, and it's still 3-0. Ichiro is just grounding out right there to end this inning, so we're going into the top of the eighth. Price is still doing work on the mound. That's the thing with Price, though. Every time he started, he has been doing work on the hill, getting another K, and then Barry Larkin for the second out of the inning. Look at that range. Barry Larkin with the throw across the diamond to get him for the second out. And then third out is coming on the ground out to Raw Crew right there. So we're going into the bottom of the eighth. I got a good enough lead, but I'm looking to get some more damage. Looking to get some more insurance on the board. 0-1 count to Beltre. Driving one up the gut. So Beltre is able to get on base. And yeah, there's, still, there's one down I'm pretty sure after Larkin went down. And then Fielder is able to shoot the gap this time between the third baseman and the shortstop. So I'm threatening with two guys on. There's two down now. Rod Cruz sending one up the gut off the pitcher. So that could have possibly been to center field. And I maybe would have sent Beltre right there. Who knows? But then yee. Yee. That was a bad swing from Crawford. That was my, that was my fault right there. Uh, either way though. 
Pablo Bond is now in the game, making the debut for the squad. So I was looking to get some K's with this guy. I mean, I know he doesn't have the best, fa he doesn't have the fastest fastball. I think his fastball was reaching 97. But man, this guy's got four pitches. He's got a splitter, a slider, and a changeup with the fastball. And all of his off-speed pitches are in the 80s. So if you're dropping in 86, 85 mile an hour changeups, 88 mile an hour splitter I think he has, and then you're throwing a high 97 mile an hour fastball, that is heat right there, man. That is tricking people. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm looking to keep this guy. Obviously, I can't get rid of him, but he's definitely going to be in the pen. Not sure if he's going to be the permanent closer or just be a setup guy. I don't know what's going to happen yet. But he's doing work since he's been in the game. Gets the first K. Now, this guy's down 0-2 in this at-bat with Marte. He has up at the plate. One down still. I'm going down in the strike zone with the splitter. And he's chasing it in the dirt. And then Barra throws him out at first base. So this guy's down to his last out of this game. He's got Trevor Story coming to the plate. How many home runs this guy hit at the beginning of the season? But yeah, he's got Story coming to the plate. I'm starting him off with the high heat right there going back to the high heat 97 on the gun so i'm looking for some off speed down in the strike zone this time with the slider and getting him swinging and missing so papelbon strikes out the side when he comes in the ninth inning price again hogging up the player of the game category 10 more k's Price has, the price has been right, to say the least, since he's been on the squad. But Papelbon, good debut, good game from the boys. I got more MLB videos ready to post ASAP, and they're going to be crazy.